On April 21st, just one day after SpaceX Starship launched for the first time, China also debuted the latest design of its super heavy lift vehicle, Changzing 9, CZ9. The concept is notable for its appearance, the same as Starship. And without a doubt, China continues to copy the SpaceX rocket. Let's expose everything about it in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Shangxing 9, or Long March 9, is being developed by the China Academy of Launch Vehicle Technology, or CALT, presentations at events marking China's National Space Day in the city of Hefei, that's in the Anhui province last month, that revealed plans for the Long March 9 rocket, including developing an apparently Starship-inspired, fully reusable version. The initial version, 114 meters long, a mass at liftoff of 4,400 tons, and it will generate 6,100 tons of thrust. This will be followed by a two-stage variant capable of carrying 150 tons of payload to low Earth orbit, or 100 tons when landing the first stage. A fully reusable 80 tons to LEO variant will be the ultimate objective, and it's expected to fly in the 2040s. Looking at this, you'll probably recognize the silhouette of Starship, especially the upper stage, which would allow for reuse of the second stage, in addition to the already planned reuse of the first stage. It differs only in a very few small details. According to this update, the first stage would now feature 30 engines in a 3918 configuration, with three being the center engines, 18 on the outside ring. An optional third stage using the YF-79 also came back to the design to allow for beyond low-Earth orbit missions similar to a kick stage. Importantly, this copying is not only on paper, China's actually been doing it since the beginning of this year. Colt announced that on March 2nd it had manufactured the huge tank, demonstrating it had made the breakthrough required to produce a propellant storage tank strong enough, yet also thin and light enough for use in a rocket engine. The 9.5-meter tank was built to spec for an old design for an expendable version of China's planned Long March 9 rocket. China has since stated it is switching to a new reusable design with a diameter of 10.6 meters, but the demonstration of techniques such as stir friction welding and material will be applicable to the new plan. Long March is a family of Chinese expendable launch system rockets that's been in development for over 50 years and serves almost all space missions of the People's Republic of China. The first rocket in the series, Long March 1, was developed on the basis of the DF-4 ballistic missile, and it launched the first Chinese satellite, Dongfang Hong-1, into space on April 24, 1970. China's current widest and most powerful rocket is the 5M Long March 5 family, which can launch roughly 22,000 kilograms to low Earth orbit. When it flies for the first time in 2033, the Long March 9 will have a payload capacity to LEO around 140 to 150,000 kilograms. The rocket will be used to build China's planned International Lunar Research Station, which is the country's answer to NASA's Artemis project. It could also be used for launching space-based solar power infrastructure and deep space missions. Another similarity to Starship is in the fuel. China had previously aimed to debut an expendable Long March 9 rocket using 500-ton thrust kerosene liquid oxygen engines somewhere around 2028 to 2030. However, the Long March 9 project has evolved in the last couple of years from an initial, expendable, more traditional Long March-style rocket kerosene-fueled rocket featuring a 10-meter diameter core and four 5-meter diameter boosters presented in the early 2010s to now a single-stick version powered variously by kerosene or methane engines. Methane liquid oxygen provides performance benefits and reduces soot and coke problems for reusability. The plan follows the trend of switching to propellants by SpaceX, Blue Origin, and ULA. It was also announced by Wang Jiajun, president of the China Academy of Launch Vehicle Technology, following the concept of a smaller stage methane liquid oxygen carrier apparently borrowed from the SpaceX spacecraft. An obvious switch to Metalox suddenly appears. However, the Chinese propulsion agency under the state-owned conglomerate China Aerospace Science and Technology Corp. has been working on methane engines for a long time, allowing some changes to the plan.
The change in direction means delays in acquiring the rocket's capabilities, which could delay the country's planned International Lunar Research Station project. China is also developing the Long March 10, which could have a first flight in 2027 and could, with a pair of launches, be able to send a crew to the lunar surface before the end of the decade. This would not be the first time that the Chinese space program has drawn inspiration from SpaceX. The country tracks SpaceX from the very beginning, particularly with an interest in SpaceX's plan to reuse rocket first stages. During the company's first launch in 2006, as reported in the book Liftoff, a Chinese spy boat was in the small patch of ocean where the Falcon 1 rocket's first stage was due to re-enter. In 2019, the Chinese Long March 2C rocket tested grid fins like those used by the first stage of Falcon 9's rocket to steer itself through the atmosphere during re-entry process. China intends to develop the Long March 8 rocket to land on a sea platform similar to what the Falcon 9 booster did. And semi-private Chinese firms such as Link Space and Galactic Energy appear to be mimicking SpaceX launch technology. More recently in 2021, a promotional video captured and shared on the Chinese social network Weibo shows two different concepts for achieving suborbital passenger flights about two decades from now. What's interesting about the video is the first concept looks strikingly like the SpaceX Starship vehicle. It shows a large vehicle capable of vertical takeoff and vertical landing. The vehicle's exterior is shiny, similar to the stainless steel of Starship, and the first and second stages are similarly seamless. They even function as well. Although Starship's primarily been promoted as a vehicle to take humans to the moon and Mars, SpaceX has also developed a point-to-point -point concept. SpaceX first unveiled this Earth-to-Earth -Earth concept in September of 2017. A video released at the time showed a suborbital flight time on Starship from New York City to Shanghai of just 39 minutes and advertised the capability of anywhere on Earth in less than an hour. Well, this is easy to understand. These projects were set after evaluation of the pace of China's technological progress and international advances pioneered by SpaceX. In a long time, China's Long March rockets are among the least expensive methods of accessing space, and they've played an important role in the rapid expansion of China's space infrastructure in recent years. The average cost of a Long March rocket is about U.S. $3,000 per kilogram of cargo lifted to low Earth orbit, and that's according to a CASC report published in the Journal of Aerospace China in August. In comparison, NASA's space shuttle costs more than $60,000 U.S. per kilogram lifted. But in recent years, SpaceX, using the reusable Falcon 9 rocket, has slashed that launch cost to about the same as the Long March rocket, according to CASC. SpaceX founder Elon Musk said Starship Super Heavy, the largest ever reusable rocket that's being readied for its first flight, can reduce the cost to U.S. $10 per kilogram. Although Musk's claim was doubted by many critics, it's widely believed SpaceX could bring the cost down to a few hundred dollars per kilogram. The future Changzing 9 has been touted as useful for launching components for a space-based solar power station in geostationary orbit. Reusable super heavy lift rockets could make the related launch cost much more manageable and cheaper while still needing to solve a range of technical, engineering, and financial issues surrounding the venture. So far, the future trajectory of Changzing 9 is uncertain, but it appears that China's adapting well to the current state of the global rocket market, particularly with regard following the industry leader. And that'll wrap it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comments section. Your support is motivation for us to create more quality content. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.